the mayor is in there, they're having a discussion about mayoral control with some business people um, who I'm sure probably don't have any kids in the city school district. And um, they're trying, he's trying to get their support um, for this controversial issue that he's, he's brought to the table. Um, and I'm totally opposed to it. I don't even really want to talk to him until he gets suffrage off the table. I have a host of concerns about mayoral control. One is democracy. Uh, people will lose the right to vote. Two, I don't quite frankly think that if this mayor believes that this district is struggling and is not on the right path, I don't believe he actually has a plan to turn it around. Most of what he's offered in his last rendition are things that one, could are already being done, or two, could be done right now in conjunction with the district. He doesn't need to take command of the boat in order for us to get through these rough waters. He needs to staff an oar, man an oar, him and his deputy mayor and the school board and community members all have oars, and together we can get to shore together. But, but to start grabbing people's oars in these very turbulent waters is very unproductive. I just want to think one thing about it. What Merrill Controls does, it, it, takes the vote, it takes the voters out of the parents' hands. It puts it in one man's hands. And, and that's not something that was fought for for all those years for everybody to have a chance to vote. And at least now at the school board, we can talk to the seven members. But with mayoral control, you don't talk to seven members. It's hard enough to talk to Mayor Duffy now. So imagine if he had these added duties too, we, 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 we wouldn't be able to talk to him. So to me, like I said, you're, you're, you're taking the school board away from the parents and you're taking the parents' voting rights away. And that the Rochester Business Journal, along with Mayor are sponsoring this forum, $45 a person to be able to come and be part of and get in on the conversation. So I, I think that it's, uh, it's wrong to put that kind of a price on people having a voice, particularly the people who are most directly impacted um, by this issue. And I also um, don't have a lot of confidence in kind of the Lone Ranger approach of changing systems. Historically, Lone Ranger approaches have never changed systems collaborative, collective approaches, working with the people is what has changed systems. Um, there's a $45 fee, it, and right now it's like, it's not even eight o'clock in the morning. Teachers have to be in class, students have to be in class, most parents have to be working. So he didn't try to include anybody here. Um, and who can afford $45 for a breakfast? Um, so he's, he's, he's really not trying to engage the community. And um, we're outraged, um, and that's why we're out here in the rain, in the cold, um, letting them know uh, we're not going nowhere. This is not a city-sponsored forum. This is a private event by the Business Journal, uh, and they have these often, and they do charge. Our events are not charged. I mean, anything we, we sponsor, we would be for free. Oh. It wasn't meant to be exclusive in any fashion. We obviously have to pay for the facility. We had to pay to bring the speakers in uh, from around the country. And so we have expenses associated with this event. We are videotaping the event in its entirety, and that will be available on our website later today for anyone who's unable to be here today, whether it's because of time or, or financial concerns. Mm -hmm. He seems unwilling to come out in public and discuss these issues. He will um, carefully select his audiences and the formats in which he speaks so that he does not need to face critical questions or um, address opposing viewpoints. I've heard him repeatedly hold up that, oh, he went to a, for, to a school meeting and sat in with parents at School of the Arts. I was at that meeting. That was not billed as a Duffy presentation. In fact, I did not know that he and his entourage were going to show up until I was there. It was a parent networking night, and he basically came in uh, with a captive audience type of approach and talked to us and talked to us and talked to us about pretty superficial things having to do with his ideas about education. And parents actually had to interrupt him to even get any chance to say anything. The Business Alliance, the Rochester Business Alliance, the Rochester Business Journal are sponsoring a private breakfast discussion that cost $45 a plate and was held at 7.30 in the morning. Um, again, this is an example of Duffy selecting where and when and under what context he appears. Um, so these are business people who the vast majority of them do not live in the city. The vast majority of them, if any of them, do not have uh, kids in the district. 
and it's basically a friendly audience for him. And so we're protesting the fact that this is a closed debate in the in the setting where he's refusing to bring his views in public. Well, today uh, we are offering a people's breakfast that is uh, free to the people of the city of Rochester. We're doing this because currently Mayor Duffy is inside the convention center uh, to hold a breakfast and a forum on mayoral control. Uh, and his attempts to take control of the, the Rochester City School District. Uh, the only thing about that is that breakfast costs $45 and it's conveniently scheduled at 7.30 a.m. on a Tuesday morning when families are working, students are in school, community members you know, have other responsibilities and things like that. Uh, so we decided to offer a free breakfast that community members could access and uh, a free discussion because that's the way that, that this should be handled. Well, other than simply opposing mayoral control, uh, I'm questioning why the mayor is uh, trying to sort of have this discussion about mayoral control behind closed doors um, at a $45 breakfast that's exclusive of anyone who's poor working class, um, and at a time of the day when working class people are usually at work. It's, it's, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning right now. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to know why this is there isn't a real public debate going on. To you, why are you uh, why are you trying to stifle debate? Why are you trying to have this debate, uh, you know, behind closed doors with a group of uh, essentially wealthy white people? Uh, he isn't taking any input from the community. He's more interested in what these business leaders have to say about how they can take over our kids' lives. My biggest concern is privatization of, uh, of city schools uh, and not having a way to do anything about it. Uh, you know, right now we have a democratically elected board uh, that would be dismantled. That's Van White going in. He's one of the guys we're supporting today because he's actually speaking out against mayoral control, against this, uh, this $45 crap. We're here in solidarity with Van and with Adam Urbanski of the RTA. The fact that the people are speaking about a number of issues. One, the fact that the mayor has canceled four community forums. Uh, his reason was, well, I can't have these forums because I don't know what the Albany bill is going to look like. Well, if that was your rationale, why are you here today? And I think citizens are genuinely, rationally upset at that. That he said, uh, this community is a community that I can speak to in advance of the bill being written, but that community standing out there in the cold, they're not worthy of that discussion. And I submit that they are equal partners, along with the business community, in turning our schools around. And to have a dialogue with them, that is the business community, and not with the citizens, I think is unfair and very, very, very undemocratic. And all I'm asking for is this, uh, is to give us a five-year change, an opportunity to, uh, to take a five-year test and see if it works. We know what has not worked for decades, but the test up and see, can we do something different that in the end would have better outcomes for children? That has to be... I, I think the, the, the idea that they say they want to do is that they, they, they will affect uh, through school graduation rates. But when you look at the statistics about this, mm -hmm. uh, there really hasn't been a, a strong uh, correlation mayor control and, and improvement. In fact. Well, it's an interesting argument that they make. For example, if they look at the National Education Assessment Program, which basically controls tests, it's basically the gold standard for testing on math and test scores. The two highest ranking school districts on the NEAP are non mayoral control districts. The two lowest, the three lowest performing districts are mayoral control districts. Two of them, Chicago and Cleveland, have been mayoral control districts for 10 years apiece. And they're, yet they're the lowest. So I don't think it's fair to say that mayoral control is the silver bullet because the evidence just isn't there to suggest that it is. I'd say they're pretty much just saying what Duffy is saying. They're, they're speaking his, his rhetoric and I don't think we should adopt his language. Uh, we, we know based on what's happened in New York City, what's happened in Chicago and Boston and Cleveland and all these other cities, that it doesn't improve graduation rates. We don't have to give it a, a five-year test run to know that. Um, we don't have to wait another, we don't have to, to play with another five years of students give, getting, getting poor graduation rates, not knowing how to read or write. Uh, 
and all the things Bob Duffy is proposing or has proposed in his uh, written pamphlets, he can do without mayoral control. We have an elected school board that can do all of that. Uh, they, they may need some direction. I'm not a fan of the school board myself, but, uh, but at least they're, they're accountable to the people who elect them. Unlike Mayor Duffy, you know, we elected him to bring jobs to the city, to help with, the, with this, this poverty issue, to help with, with the poor health of city residents. If he were doing that, this probably wouldn't even be an issue. Uh, but, but he's not willing to do that. Instead, he just wants to control everything. He wants to control the finances. I'm saying hell no. Well, my perception is that the city school districts are uneven, that there's a lot of inequity. Um, if you work really hard to get your, your child into the so-called right school, um, then you can do fine. And, and all of the teachers, I believe, are dedicated and the school staff are dedicated. Um, you know, and that's one of the things that's annoying is how Duffy is trying to split parents against the school staff. Um, but there's definitely inequity. And one of the things that Duffy is talking about right now is he's touting this idea of a neighborhood school um, for every child, which sounds really good, you know, neighborhood schools. So Duffy's idea of neighborhood schools sounds really good on the surface. But the fact is, right now, parents do have priority to send their kids to their neighborhood schools, but only 17% of parents choose to. And there's reasons for that. One has to do with uh, transportation issues, because if you live too close, ironically, then your kid has to walk. And that's a backward system that we need to fix. We do not need mayoral control and the elimination of voting rights to fix that problem. But what I'm concerned about is if he is going to just superficially say that uh, all families need to use their neighborhood schools, they will actually be forced into substandard schools as they currently exist. So that's a problem, and it's an example of how Duffy um, appears to be using like marketing information about parent opinions on relatively superficial issues to shape his debate. I think we have to look at systemic problems. We have to look at poverty, lack of access to living wage jobs. You know, it's everybody says, and I agree, that a lot of the problems have to do with the troubles and the situations that a lot of kids are coming from. Um, you know, so we really have to look at living wage jobs. Parents cannot sustain good parenting if they're forced to work three or four part-time jobs. This week they have adequate hours, the next week they don't. Um, housing is insecure, basic necessities, RG&E can get cut off and then you got to go stay at Graham's. I mean, there's all kinds of things that the Business Alliance has no clue about the daily reality of our families' lives in our school districts. Well, I say, first of all, to the business elites, uh, I'm sure you have interests um, in terms of your pocket. This isn't uh, a monetary issue. This is this is a human issue. There, there are people's lives at stake, um, quite literally. Keep them out your face. Keep them in your prayers. Either that or keep them in the crosshairs. Better still keep an even dose of each, cause until you get justice, you won't get peace. Peace, 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 pe